we are all about photos. I just love photos. If you travel a lot, then you are in beautiful places and you take lots of photos. We use Chromecast to be displaying our photos on the big screen TV and other photo frame devices all around the house. So yes, this is in two parts. And first, we're gonna do the Chromecast part because that's really the main point of this presentation is filling your house with your memories. And then the second part, we'll talk about the memories that are in your old photo albums and how to get those into Google Photos and then onto the TV or other photo frame devices. So here's, here's what we're talking about. If you have old photos in an album, you can scan them into Google Photos and then they can display on the TV, kind of like a, a screensaver, although that's an old term now. It's, it's, it's now called ambient mode. You know, when your TV isn't doing anything else, it can be randomly showing all your photos. And first we have a, a little video to make sure you get the idea. And that's the cast. Good morning, Jim. Ah, good morning. <laughs> I would like you to show our viewers how we watch our photos on the TV all day long. Okay. It's tough. I know. Remote. One button. Wow. Look at that. Yeah. All I have to do is turn on the TV. Oh, that was three years ago. That was Easter Sunday. Easter Sunday. <laughs> because we, had, we went to the Grand Canyon because we had the uh, van fix. <laughs> <laughs> These are great pictures. So, yeah, we even we use this kind of as a memory test, too. So where was that, Jim? This was on the Mississippi. Oh, my. This is but from... You were in Turkey. This is from 1999. And when mom and I were on a boat in Turkey. Oh. <laughs> See, I could do this all day. This is so much better than anything on TV. It is so much better. But what if you did want to watch TV? What do you do? Oh, you just have to change the input. Yeah, but you have to push the right button. <laughs> What's this button do? <laughs> okay. All right. So now we're watching TV. Yeah. All right, so what if you're done watching TV, do you turn the TV off? I never turn the TV off anymore. I just put it onto the, onto the setting that is the pictures. And we have this in, on this TV, on our kitchen TV, and it's even available upstairs in our bedroom TV. And where are these pictures coming from? I mean, are you, are you secretly clicking on your phone here to make these pictures? All of these pictures are stored in Google Photos, and we choose which albums we want to see. And we can change that, or we can just let it let it go with a huge album. It's, it's just so much fun. So, it, especially in this time yeah. where we are ordered to stay at home, I just love that we see our photos all over the house. It feels, it feels like we're traveling even though we're home. And we just leave them on all the time. Slide. It is the best show on TV. So this slide is talking about what you do. At Google Photos is what makes all this happen. And the Google Home app and the Chromecast device. <laughs> so we're going to go over all three of those. And the Chromecast device can be showing your photos on a TV. Also, the little Nest Home devices are scattered all around our house. All I have to do is open my eyes in the morning and I am looking at our photos on that device. 
So it's kind of like a screensaver. What do you need? You need good household Wi-Fi. All of this runs on Wi-Fi. You need either a Chromecast enabled smart TV or you buy a little $35 Chromecast device and plug it in to the HDMI port on any TV. You need, for doing what we're talking about, you need a Google Photos account. And lastly, you need the Google Home app. So how do you set it up? You do it on the Google Home app. You find the device that you want to display your photos. And you tap on personalize ambient. And I, I will do this on, on the phone in just a minute. Then you select Google Photos and choose whatever albums you want to be displaying. Now realize it does it completely randomized. It's, it's like a screensaver. You do not know what photo is going to come after another one. You can also change settings like how many seconds each picture stays on. All right. So now I want to show you on the phones because that's where the Google Home app is and I want you to see that ah, here we go there we go this is my Android my Samsung Android phone and this is my iPhone I just want to show you that the home app that's this one right here the multicolored look looks like a little house is available on both the Apple and on the Android devices. There's a couple tiny little differences, but generally they work the same. I'm going to use my Samsung because that is my main, my main phone these days. So you go into Home, and now the Home app can control all sorts of things in your home. I mean, Jim has set up all sorts of automated lights, you know, nest lights, the thermostat, and we have several TVs and several of these little devices. So I go down and I just find living room. Now, Jim, you want to say a few words as to how that got there? I mean, what if they, they just come home with a Chromecast device, what do they do to get to the living room? Well, they have to read the directions, first of all. And if they have all of those things, the Wi-Fi and all that set, you need to download and power on the Chromecast. Show your face. And you <laughs> <laughs> There we go. That's us. And then you have to plug everything in, get it all powered up, start the app on your phone or on typically your phone, and... The home app is where everything is done. You connect to the to the Chromecast with your phone. You configure everything through the home app. And, and once you choose any name for these devices, and once you give it a name, and it can be anything you want, you're pretty much ready to go. Now you have to do the configuration for what you want to see up there. So the point is just it really is easy. You plug it in and you follow the prompts and you name the device. So when we plugged in a Chromecast onto this TV, it ends up being called Living Room TV. I open up the Home app and I find Living Room TV and I open it up. And it is showing me on the app exactly what is being seen on the living room and now jim we, we've set up another camera out in the living room so you can see what's in, so see see how they are in sync in sync here so it's showing me on the phone what is being displayed on the tv on the tv the tv is up there and then chris's stuff is over here so on the home app i'm going to tap on personalize ambient. So ambient is what it calls that. When nothing else is happening on the TV, what pictures do you want to be randomly shown? Personalize ambient. And let's say to start with, I'm going to uncheck everything. 
So I have no albums being shown. What's going on on the TV now? Okay. Well, when I go out, it says, okay, do you want to show the art gallery on the TV? So there's still a screensaver up. It's just not our pictures anymore because I have told it no albums to show. So that's not one of our pictures. That is sure. not our picture. No, <laughs> that's an art gallery. So if I do want to tell it what pictures, I'm in the home app on uh, living room TV and I tap on Google Photos. And there's this thing called recent highlights, which is really cool. This is Google just notices whenever you take new pictures and using its artificial intelligence, it decides which ones it thinks are best and starts showing them. Or you can pick specific albums. You can also pick favorites. I, I tend to like doing favorites. And I really like our New Zealand pictures from last year. So I'm going to pick those two albums, Favorites and New Zealand. And now on the TV, you are seeing our favorite pictures or our New Zealand. And they are will be completely random. Yeah, it would be nice sometimes to be able to sequence them. But there's another way to do that, too. Yeah, you can play albums on a Chromecast. This is what we're teaching today is just how to have your screens showing pictures all day long. Pretty cool. Okay. Is that it for that one? Yep. Um, now, on the Android only, there is one other method. So back to here. And that is just using Google Photos. The Google Photos app on the Android, if you tap the three-line menu, and photo frames. So it's called photo frames. And there are all our photo frame devices in this house. And there is living room TV. And it's showing me that I have favorites and Australia, New Zealand. If I decide that I just want every picture of Jim and me to pop up whenever we take a new one, I can do that. I can say, show me those pictures. But I can also control my uh, Nest Hub. So that's, that's this device here. This is, this is the device that usually sits next to my bed. And all I have to do is roll over and look at it, and I'm seeing my beautiful pictures. And this one is called so if i go into photo frames i can control that device as well i just need to know what it's called and this one happens to be called the kitchen display i took i grabbed this one from the kitchen so kitchen display and it is showing our favorites and our geek story let's say i want i want it to show our dive we went we went on a dive trip just a couple months ago 2020 dive club bimini so if i turn that on now in just after i exit i should be able to look at this device and it will start showing the dive photos there's a timing delay in there too, so you can determine how often those slides change or those photos change, right? Right, and that cannot be done from the Google. Ah, there we go. There's there's yep. the dive trip. It runs anywhere from five seconds to a minute, and that setting is in the Home app, not on the not on the Google Photos. Right. So we're seeing different things on that device than we're seeing on our on our TV up there in the in the living room. So we have several of these devices around and some of them are showing albums that, that are favorites and some are showing our our Australia New Zealand trip and and then the other one might be showing our Europe trip and and all that stuff. And it's just so cool the way that you can do this and it's 
it's easy. <laughs> it's it's so it's, easy. It's, it's just taking your photos and having them in Google Photos and then making albums. You could also set this up at somebody else's house. Let's say, let's say that grandma, grandma loves seeing pictures of the grandkids. Well, buy her one of these devices or set up her Chromecast on the TV, go over to her house and connect to her Wi-Fi, open up your home app and tell it to play a live album every time a grandkid's face is Added, ha added, added to, to a picture. Cool. And then it'll just automatically update all the time. Yep. It just, just so cool. All right. If are there some questions on this section, uh, then I will go on to the next section on scanning the photos from an old album. I see album. a question. Can you do this without a television, just from your computer? Yeah. You don't need to, <laughs> really. Uh, there's no ambient mode on your on your computer that I'm aware of. Yeah, and there is no home app on the computer. Yeah. Now you can just open up Google Photos and play slideshows. And that's fine. And but if you want to use, for example, Windows Screensaver, those photos need to be on the computer, right? I believe yeah, right, right, yeah. they do. So I mean where there's a will, there's a way, but no, this particular thing that we're showing you is for Nest Home devices and for Chromecast enabled devices. Right. Yeah. There was now, another no, there was another question that said could yeah, it do yeah. on the digital frame? So it won't work on a digital frame unless it is the Nest item. Right. It needs to be a Google There are a lot of different devices out there that do this and you can even plug your your phone or your device directly into an HDMI for the TV but if you want to leave this TV at grandma's house and have those pictures showing that that part doesn't work but yeah you can plug in your a lot of phones and uh, tablets directly to the TV because realize what's happening Google Fo Photos is cloud-based so you take the pictures with your phone and they automatically go up to the cloud. So the photos in the cloud then are being linked to your TV, your Nest Hub, or grandma's TV or grandma's Nest Hub, as long as you have given, you know, you've put in your passwords and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Jim, uh, I think one, one thing that needs to be clarified that from the very first photo is when you want to watch the Chromecast, you have to switch the TV's input to the Chromecast to watch that, and then you'd have to switch back to the uh, cable or satellite cable to box watch it. Or antenna, but it's yeah, a very good point, and and I guess I kind of take that for granted sometimes, and I shouldn't because there are multiple inputs on all of these modern TVs, and you or you might have to have a switch box. If you only have one HDMI input, I know some folks with some older TVs, and they'll have to have a switch box, and that's another possibility too, an HDMI switch. But I don't know about anybody else, but I really don't watch that much <laughs> Real traditional TV. <laughs> TV anymore. It's all Netflix or Amazon Prime or, or YouTube, which is all done on the Chromecast. So. Our TV basically stays on the Chromecast input, and then when I want to watch something besides my photos, the phone becomes like a remote control. I mean, anything I play on here can be cast and to the TV. And you can pause and, you know, go fast forward. You can turn the volume up and down using the device. You got your a remote right there. So I have a Netflix app and the YouTube app and the Amazon app all on my phone, and I just tell it, play it on the TV. Question, does this use a lot of data from your service provider? Uh, it uses data, question. absolutely, yeah, but certainly. not a lot. It's, uh, it's not as much as like streaming a YouTube video or, or one of the, something like that, but it does use data. And most people these days at home have an unlimited data plan. 
But if you are paying by the megabit byte, <laughs> you probably want to uh, take a look at that. Yeah, the now, ambient mode photos does use some, but not much. Now streaming YouTube and streaming Netflix, yes, of course. But uh, those are all connected to your Wi-Fi, is that correct? Everything's, yes, everything's and connected. Most people's Wi-Fi internet is unlimited, but the few people that are using satellite. So it would be no different than whatever else uh, you would be doing off of your own Wi-Fi. Right, and it really doesn't, it's not a data hog, a resource hog, it, uh, like some of the other streaming things can be. Uh, I'll let you go for that one. From Joe, was that? the one, the last one. Some TVs have Chromecast built in, like Sony. Yeah, yeah, we have our TV upstairs in the bedroom has it built in. And one in our RV has Chromecast all built in. So that's not a, you know, what the Chromecast device does is essentially can make any TV into a smart TV with Google's. Chromecast. Yeah, if it's already a smart TV, then you're there. <laughs> right. You just have to find it on your Google Home app. All right. Ready to get to All the right. other parts? Let's sure. move on. All right. Okay, did that. <laughs> All right, so then what about old photo albums? I want to see these pictures up on the TV and my little home devices. So I want to scan them. Once they're scanned in the Google Photos, you just add them to an album, and then you specify that album to be displayed on Chromecast. So I say scanning photos, but scanning photos usually means, oh, we have this one time, usually means using a service like Costco or Forever Studios or Legacy Box. And that's going to cost you 20 cents to a dollar per photo, depending on what resolution you ask for. And you have to put them in a box and ship them away. Ah. We've done that. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> you can also hire a professional. Let's say that you have just tons, years and years worth of photos, and you want to get them organized so that you can pass them down to the next generation. You might be very well off to look at thephotoorganizers.com and hire a professional that lives near you and can come help you with that major job. Yeah, they may have to do that social distancing thing for a while. Yeah, though. I don't, yeah. <laughs> or if you have a flatbed scanner, you can you can put an album or pages from an album on the flatbed scanner. But that's not what we're talking about here today. We're talking about the free, easy way. You, you've heard of PIP, right? Picture in picture. Well, what I'm talking about here is POP, picture of pictures. <laughs> so... The, pic, the photo there shows me with a, an old photo album on my lap, and I just use my smartphone and snap pictures just using the camera. If you're in a, a lit area but that doesn't have any bright light, doesn't have any glares, you can just use the camera. And if you do, they're automatically in Google Photos. You can use the Google Photos editing tools to make them look better. And you can even change the date later if you, if you want. And we, we, cover, we cover that in other areas. So while I was sitting on the couch, this is the album I was working on. It was a trip that mom and I took to Chile in 1994. And I did not use any scanning app. I'm going to show you photo scan app in a, in a minute. But I just want you to see that even if you don't use an app, they may be fine. So let me show you what those scanned photos came out like. I'm going to show you on my iPad. So, yeah. So here, here is my iPad. And after scanning those photos from Chile in 1994, I made an album. And I know I put 1994 in the date, so I can just search for that. 
scanned photo album from 1994. And here are all the pictures I scanned out of that album. Now, do you need to scan every single picture? No. I mean, I flipped through it. There's some pictures of flowers and mountains, and, you know, I don't need them all. I just take the ones that really evoke a memory in me. But let's see what they, let's see what they look like here. You can also take a picture of a whole page, including where there was some documents, uh, like a scrapbook page. I just took a picture of the whole page. And since it's, it's digital now, I can zoom in and see exactly what dates we did this trip on. I can read about the itinerary. So I, I just think this is a great option. Once again, here's a picture that was in the album that had a little strip from the itinerary on it. I snap a photo of the whole thing. So that looks pretty good. And I just want to explain one extra benefit of having them in Google Photos. Check out this picture. This was a picture of a sign we visited and saw Andean condors when we were in Chile. Here is a sign. I don't know what it says, but Google does. If you tap on the lens button, it's the fourth one over here. Lens, first off, will just do a search. But if you tap on the little search button, you get other options, one of which is translate. Come and see the condor. <laughs> I just think that's too cool. And another example. So if I say, now I think this was the condor, is it? I can tap the Google Lens button. And just doing its search, it says, yep, that's an Andean condor. So pretty cool. And how would I get this album to display on the TV? Just use the Google Home app and specify this album as your ambient mode Google Photos album. OK. Back to this. So that's just using your camera and snapping a picture. But there are scanning apps, and the one that I like is from Google, free photo scan app, may achieve better results. It's a free app for both iOS and Android. Once it's installed, it shows up right in the Google Photos menu. And what it does, it automatically straightens and adjusts the skew. It automatically crops the photo to the edges. It gives it a little bit of color correction, and it can eliminate glare. Play video 630. So this will show you how. I'm with Chris Golden Peaks on tour, and I found an old photo album from 1993. I want to show you how I capture photos in it Sound gets using better. Photo Scan. Now, I'm going to try to not use the glare, the anti glare feature of Photo Scan. So I'm going to remove the plastic covers of these two pages. It's supposed to be so Now I'm going to open up oh, the Photo Scan wow. app, which I can get to from inside Google Photos. Three lines and Photo Scan. I'm also going to tell it that I don't want the glare removal feature by tapping on the little magic wand, putting a slash through that. Now I can just snap a picture of the picture. And with just one snap, PhotoScan captures the picture, straightens the skew, and crops to the edges. Now this one is slightly different. Because it's cropping to the edges of the photo, but I want that little sticker that says Chris 1993 also. So I'm going to open up the photo, open that photo. I'm in Photo Scan here, 
and adjust corners because I want to include that sticker, which it automatically cropped out and done and modify. And now the last one. Okay. Now let's see what they look like. I can just go to Google Photos and there they are. There's the one that I changed to include the Christmas 1993. Here it's cropped perfectly. How easy was that? Now I, I can still do adjustments in Google Photos if I want. I can edit that and I can crop it a little bit more and adjust to auto and save. And did I mention that this is an iPhone? So Google Photo Scan and Google Photos works just the same on the iPhone as on the Android. So I have an old album here. And I started going through it and I saw Oh, there's Jim's and my first Christmas together, 1993, a Christmas. Now, I probably will put this album on my lap and go sit on the couch and, and do it the comfy way. But to show you here, I've taken out the pages. This happens to be a three ring binder type of. So I've taken out just a couple pages of our Christmas 1993 photos. And let's see if I can get this so that you can see what I'm doing. All right. Yeah. So this is my, just my Android phone. And here is the page from the album. And I'll show you. I open up Google Photos. And then I can get to Photo Scan. Remember, Photo Scan is still an app that must be installed. But once it is installed, Three line menu and photo scan. You can also run it as a standalone, right? Yeah, you can. But it's nice if it, it comes through right from your yeah. Google photo. So this Jim actually played Santa Claus this year, and I just oh, thought that oh, was oh. so cool. <laughs> now I have the anti glare turned off, and you'll learn more about that in, in a minute. So all I'm going to do is snap the photo. OK. And then I can look at it by tapping on this little button. And oops, it came <laughs> upside down. All right. Well, PhotoScan understands that because of the way you're holding the phone, it may sometimes be upside down. So there's a rotate option. Oh, I feel better now. <laughs> <laughs> I also, it, it crops to the edges of the photo. But this particular photo had a sticker on it, and I don't like that that got cut off. So I'm going to tap on Adjust Corners. And it says Corners, so you can actually adjust them individually, or you can grab an edge and drag the whole thing out and then done. But notice this big nasty glare in the photo. That, when I was sitting on the couch, I didn't have that. It was a nice overcast day, no problem. We're in a film studio here with <laughs> lights, lights everywhere. PhotoScan can help you get rid of those glares and so watch watch another of our pre-recorded videos here. Uh, 31. Yes. Hi, this is Chris And I'm going to use photo scan to capture these pictures that are behind glass and show you how it eliminates the glare. Photo scan is an app by Google. I can get to it from my photos app. Three lines and photo scan. Now I just get the picture in frame and 
tap the button. And now it's going to say, circle those four dots. And it takes a picture with each of the dots. When it puts them all together, the glare will be gone. Let's do another. Tap it. Then you move the circle over each dot. Now, if yours isn't doing that, it might be because you have the glare control off. And that's that little button right there. If there's a slash through it, then it's not going to do the glare control. So let's do one more. Notice it also has a flash. The purpose of the flash is to get rid of the reflections. Then the purpose of the four shots is to get rid of the glare from the flash. All right. And then I'll show you how that looks in Google Photos. So here I am looking at Google Photos, and here are the three shots I just took from that big framed collage on the wall. Not bad. But you could still do some adjustments even in Google Photos. I can click on Auto, or I might even decide it looks better in black and white. The next photo, that looks pretty good. I can always use an auto, though. Auto correction brightens it up a little bit. And the third one, same thing. Just do an auto. How about an auto, and then we'll go to color, and then just back off on the color a little bit. So what do you think? Isn't that cool? Yeah. Somebody asked, can slides be scanned? And if so, how? Well, you need to watch our episode. Which 189? One? 188, 188 or 188. We did slides and then we did prints. So all of that stuff is on there. The episodes that he's referring to is we do a YouTube show called What Does This Button Do? And if you go to our website at geeksontour.com, you'll see a menu item for YouTube show. And there's 190 of them listed. <laughs> and one of them is all about gets getting your old slides okay. in. Uh, Isaac says, photo sticks are widely advertised. Any benefits to this storage method? And the they're nice to have as another backup. I don't know. We like Google Photos. Those photos, your, pic your pictures are saved into the cloud and they're available wherever you happen to be with your Google account. They're private to you and it's always good. And we recommend having a second backup of all your photos, or at least the ones you want to keep. Uh, and on a secondary hard drive or a USB drive, those photo stick type of devices have some built-in software to scan your computer for pictures and, and video files and things like that. But they will also often pick up stuff that are, is just extraneous, not even having to do with your stuff. So, yeah, I mean, they're, they're good. They work, but they take a little bit of work and... Uh, we like Google Photos. Okay, I see one question that says, tell me again how you did those four dots. So let me, let me show you again, okay? I'm, first of all, just opening Google Photos and then the three line menu and going to photo scan. Now the key here is this little button. I call it a magic wand. If you tap it and have a line through it, then it is not going to do the four dots for the glare control. So I do want to have glare control. And here is a picture from that Christmas. All you do is tap the shutter button once and it brings up those four dots. And you just move the phone so that the circle encircles the dot. And it, once it, once it's in place, it takes the shot. Okay. And while 
you were watching that like three minute video, I did three pages worth of these Christmas shots. So now I want to make, put in them into an album and then put the album onto the TV. You with me? <laughs> All right. So I need to come back over here. and open up Google Photos. And here are what eight eight pictures. Oops. <laughs> He's upside down again. All right. Let's let's fix him. And there. I'm done. Okay. And save. So now I want to put those eight shots into an album called 1993 Christmas. Step one, select them. Long press on the first one, just drag through to the last one. They are now eight selected. Tap the plus, say I wanna create an album, call it 1993 Christmas, and okay, and the check mark. Now, I since I'm on an Android, I don't have to go to the home app, I can just go to this thing called photo frames in Google Photos. Find the living room TV. And tell it that I want 1993 Christmas to be displaying and I'm going to uncheck the others so that we have a greater possibility that the Christmas 1993 will come up quickly. All right. So show them the TV, Jim. That's, that's not it yet. No, not yet. But again, all of this stuff is cloud-based, so it's going to take a little bit, a little bit, just the tiniest amount of time for everything to get together. Hmm. Not yet? Not yet. Come on. Come on, Santa Claus. <laughs> I just checked to make sure. <laughs> you had was, all the settings, right? Yeah, yeah, but I didn't have it right. Okay. Uh, While we're watching, how about okay. answering the question of, sure. you use an iPhone, why aren't you using iPhoto? Uh, because Google Photos is better. <laughs> That, that you know, I'm a Google person. I I have an iPhone primarily to prove that the Google products work on both, and and that is that is the that's the number one reason I like Google Photos better, because I'm not locked in to the Apple Apple devices. But it has it has several other features that I think are better too. Although Apple keeps improving theirs, so there's kind of a leapfrog going on. Okay. Uh, somebody asked if the, uh, do we save on Google the original size or the reduced size? Well, we use the the size setting that is high quality. If you use high quality in Google Photos, you have unlimited storage for all of your photos, right? Mm -hmm. And videos. So no other, nobody else does the videos for free. And original size is up to 16 megapixels, and it is good, high quality. So the pictures are up there now, There's right? Santa. Yep. Hey, I made it. There's Santa. And I'm right side up, too, <laughs> for a change. Now, now, the photos look a lot better than what you're seeing. You know, this is, this is a camera on a camera on a screen. <laughs> yeah, it really does look good on the, on the, on the TV. Yeah. Okay. Okay. More questions? Well then, we have questions for you. Yeah, there's still a couple more slides. So why photo scan? You know, sometimes I like what the camera does with the picture better than the photo scan. So it, it's just something to play with yourself. In any case, you can still do cropping and color correction in Google Photos after you have scanned it with either just your camera or with the photo scan. There's more Santa. 
<laughs> <laughs> All right. We, we always like to end our presentation with some review questions. So we're going to do that. And then we're still here for a few more minutes to answer your questions. Did you learn something? True or false, to take pictures of pictures in albums, you need expensive lights. Nope. <laughs> in fact, no lights is, is usually better. Okay. The PhotoScan app improves upon a snapshot of an old photo. How? A, eliminating glare. B, straightening skew. C, cropping to the edge of photo. Or D, all of the above. All of the above. Okay. Eliminating glare requires extra steps. You can turn off anti-glare feature by tapping which icon? The magic wand. When your TV or smart screen is displaying random photos from selected Google Photos albums, that's called photo frames, screensavers, ambient mode, or slideshow? It's called both photo frames and ambient mode on, on different devices for different purposes. Okay, when your TV or smart screen is displaying random photos, you control which albums show by using what app? Is it Chromecast app? Google Home or Google Photos Android app? Google Home is the, is the main app. And if you have an Android, the Google Photos app has the ability to specify albums. Okay, your smart TV may already have Chromecast built in. If not, you can buy a $35 Chromecast device and plug it into what kind of port? HDMI. Very good. And then all you need to know is which HDMI port you plugged it into, set your TV to that input, and it's, it's now a big photo frame. Very cool. Questions? You want to let John? John? Oh, no, you're doing fine. I was going to say, make sure that you take a second here to publicize uh, your website where everybody can come to find all the stuff you're talking about, the videos, your 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 Sunday podcast or uh, yeah, po kind of be a podcast. Uh, I don't know. Do you call video a podcast? I don't know. A video yeah. podcast. We yes. call it a webcast. <laughs> yeah. So we do that because oh, really? the yeah. number of questions was you know people want to know you know what where's your YouTube site? Well, it's a lot easier. Just go to your website and get the links there. Everything is at geeksontour.com. So if you just go to geeksontour.com. You'll find menu items and all the information, all of our tutorial videos, all of the shows that we do, all of the all of the things that we have available, and we have a lot there. We've done a hundred and hundred ninety shows, ninety episodes. Those are one hour and six hundred and thirty one. Show me how tutorial videos. Yeah, in <laughs> fact, you just saw the latest two videos there. That's good. I want you to know that you made an impression today that somebody was just looking into scanning photos. They were planning on going and buying a flatbed scanner, but they're now going to go with photo scan thanks to you. And somebody mentioned in the chat there that, that if you belong to a computer club, then you might have access to some scanning tools too. Now, I do want to make sure you realize, I mean, doing a scanner or sending them off to a service, you will get better quality. But, but, <laughs> but so, I mean, yeah. I, these are good enough. And the way me. we did our slides, uh, we told you to go to our, our episode, but we basically just set up the slide projector and a slide screen or projector screen. We and set up then, the phone <laughs> and we just snapped away. Just the picture, you know, you put the carousel on and you go through and you, that one's good, you take a picture. That one's bad, that one's bad, that one's bad, that one's good. You take a picture of it and you, you just go through that way. And then you can throw your slides out.